Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're going to take a look at an extremely cheap set of watercolors that I just picked up on Amazon um, a couple weeks ago. Uh, I was just, I was just intrigued. I had seen this every once in a while. I'll look on Amazon just to see what's new in art supplies and watercolor in particular. And this set kept coming up. And it comes in a different variety of, of arrangements. I believe it comes in 24, 36, or 48 colors. There might be a 12 color set too, but this 48 color set was $15.99 and I couldn't resist it. I needed a new tin, so I figured, well, if I was going to buy an empty tin with half pans, it would cost me about $20. So, you know, just to buy it for the tin and half pans, it would be worth it. So I ordered it and um, and I gave it a, I gave it a whirl. I had a chance to play with it and I'm going to let you know what I think. And um, I think that it might be something to consider. So it comes just in a plain, like lightweight cardboard box. Uh, on the back, you've got a swatch of all of your colors, just 48 colors in all, including a white. Um, it also comes with a water brush. And it uh, is made in China, distributed by Doodle Hog out of Wisconsin, USA. And um, they call these premium watercolor paints. Now, I wouldn't go as far as to say, that, say they're premium, but I would say they're definitely worth what I paid for them. Um, and maybe a little bit more. So uh, in the box, you have the tin, just a standard uh, 48 metal tin. And it also comes with a little like a little leaflet which I think is really interesting because um, it comes with a swatch this is how the colors come in the package so if you're looking at the paints this is the order they're in so you can tell what the color names are now the color names are more um, fanciful than what you would typically see in an artist range of paints so I don't think the names are very helpful other than the fact that you can kind of see what you have they are numbered like the pans themselves are numbered so if you wanted to go through and write the numbers on your chart that might be helpful although I don't believe they offer any um, you know refills that you could buy um, so it'd be basically just you know I think if you want to rearrange the paints like I did if you wrote down the numbers of each color on the swatch then um, if you got confused or lost in your palette maybe you dropped it and some pans came out you would kind of know what you have there but um, that's just something to think about if you're getting the set you might want to do that um, I'm not going to but uh, just depends on what you want to do um, so there is some information about taking care of your paints cleaning your water brush um, how to do a few techniques I've never seen this in in a, in a paint set before it shows you how to do a flat wash how to do a graded wash how to do a variegated wash uh, a couple techniques like um, stippling and spattering for te textures and then it even goes on the back to tell you about primary colors secondary colors and tertiary colors um, I mean it's information you never see information on these sets which I think is really wonderful because having information like this really shows you this is a set meant for beginners or um, or students or maybe people that have worked in other crafts and mediums and they want to give watercolor a try. I think this would be an excellent set for like say if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker and you want a set of inexp inexpensive paints that are pretty decent um, you don't want to have to mix a lot of colors although I did do some mixes and these did mix just fine um, I think it would be a nice a nice way to get started a nice way to go um, and of course if you're if you're making cards or scrapbook pages and that's the only thing you're using your watercolors for you're not going to run out anytime soon. It's definitely going to going to get you a while. Um, so I thought that was really a nice attention to detail to have like a full color kind of instruction and brochure in there. It also comes with a swatch on a lightweight watercolor paper for you to fill out. So here you can see what your colors are. I think this is really handy um, because as you know, watercolor paints look differently in the pans than they do when you are, um, you know, when you're when you're using them so like some of these colors are so dark you wouldn't know what they were unless you had the swatch like a bunch of these blues and greens they'd be very difficult to tell apart otherwise you can see there's a beautiful arrangement of colors here um and i swatched this out in the before i rearranged my my pans so i would know kind of where what colors were called what basically because i knew i was gonna put them in rainbow order but i love some of these colors i think these would be really fun for card makers or scrapbookers because you can just kind of like pull different colors together like these three colors would make such a pretty combination on a card um you know you could definitely just kind of pull things together and come up with some like cool ideas like that that and that i mean i think it would just be a nice design 
design element, design tool. Um, so then what I did was after I made the swatch, it was very easy for me to see what colors were what, and I rearranged the palette to my liking, starting with um, uh, starting with a you know a magenta and going all the way through the reds, oranges, yellows, greens, uh, teals, blues, purples, and then I went to my uh, my neutrals down at the bottom there. So one thing I noticed here is that it's really difficult to get these pans to ha to sit in the tray without moving around. By the way, this comes out and you have, you know, three mixing areas. The I did not wash this palette and the paints don't beat up, which I really like. So a lot of times you'll get a palette and the paint will beat up on you and you can't see what you have. When that happens, just wash your palette with detergent. That usually does a trick. If not, use a magic eraser. That definitely does a trick. Um, I've seen people do rub it with toothpaste too and rinse it off and that does a trick. So it's not a huge deal, but I like the fact that it was ready to go. Um, so looking at the colors here, um, you can see that the paints want to jiggle around. No, I did, um, so a trick for that, usually what works is you can, uh, you can pull these out, right? These did not come wrapped, they're all ready to go, which I actually kind of liked. I like it when like, you know, with your artist grade colors that you have the wrappers, because that usually has pigment information. So you put, push the fingers forward and then you snap them in and that can help them from moving. That seemed to do the trick. They are, uh, they feel like they might be a smidge on the small side, um, compared because like, they're slanted sides. They kind of remind me of the size of the Windsor Newton half pans. But um, you know, just make sure you take them out, push those little fingers in, and then you can snap the pans in. Um, they have the two rails on each side close together, so you have room in the center if you wanted to put more half pans. You you have to put them in sideways, but you could probably put like 10 half pans down the middle there. You can actually fit one more half pan in each row if you want to scooch them all the way down. So that's nice if you want to have more than what you have in the selection. There's a lot of colors here, but um, I would like to see more uh, richer browns because what you have here is you, well, I mean, that's kind of like a burnt umber or a sepia, then you've got this almost like English red kind of like the ones where Newton's burnt sienna, that kind of more reddish burnt sienna. Um, then you got this, it was kind of like a burnt sienna. Then you got this like rust, raw umber kind of color. Um, I love the brights. I love the teals. They're really pretty. Uh, I thought it was a pretty nice selection of colors and um, most of them were pretty transparent. Some were a little hazy, um, like this uh, kind of golden yellow there was a little hazy. This uh, sap green or olive green's a little hazy. Um, the white's fairly opaque, actually. You could probably use it pretty thickly and get some decent highlighting with that if you wanted to. Um, all in all, I'm pretty happy with the color selection. There are five neons. I, when I put them together, I, I just put them in. I wouldn't, like, use this palette thinking I was going to have a light fast painting, uh, meaning a painting that doesn't fade over time. So I just put my, my, my fluorescents in as they would fall in the, um, uh, kind of like in the rainbow. But here they had them all together, which, you know, it's whatever makes sense to you. Um, I was pleased with this for the price. It kind of reminded me of the um, the Master's Touch watercolors from Hobby Lobby or the Meaden pan watercolors. Um, but they're cheaper, actually. So, yeah, I, I think this would be this would be nice. It does say that these are non-toxic in, the, um, in the brochure that came with it. So... That would be good for if you wanted to use these uh, or give these to kids to use. Um, I would say the quality is not as good as the artsy ones that I recently reviewed, which I believe are made by the Superior Paint Company. Um, but these, I don't know who makes these for Doodle Hog, um, but they definitely, they definitely will do the trick. I think they're they're fun. I think they're bright and colorful. I'm sure there's lots of optical brighteners in them. Um, don't expect them to be artist quality paints or professional quality paints, but if you're looking for some fun color that you can do some like watercolor cards with, um, play around in your sketchbook, these will definitely get the job done. And then you've got a really beautiful tin, high quality tin. The tin has the uh, uh, sticker on it. Doodle Hog's a sticker, but I think we can peel that off pretty easily. Look at that, comes off without a hitch. Uh, so you could put other paints in there if you wanted to. Um, it was a little, well, maybe, I don't know if it's worth mentioning, but I could see like the little bumps on it were a little bit, look a little worn, um, but nothing that would, you know, 
really bother me. Um, so I always do like little doodles after I get my paints just to kind of get a feel for them. Here I did a mix with the warm colors. Warm colors always yield more muted tones and I did a mix with cool colors and mixing the red, yellow, and blue and the cool colors I got almost a solid black. Um, I found the colors to mix really nicely. Whoops, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm getting used to this new setup in my craft area so hey look at my palette. No. <laughs> oh, so Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I was, I was impressed with the mixing. I'm impressed with the color selection. Just wish it was maybe less gray, fewer grays and more browns. But, um, you know, hey, you've got room to put extra half pans if that's, you know, something that you want to have for the set. But let's look at a few different artworks that I did with the paint. Um, just doodling around on my watercolor paper. I did these flowers. Uh, the tutorial for that is up on my YouTube channel, that one. I mean, I've done roses before. That's just kind of a go-to. Um, now, I did notice with lots of layering, uh, lots of paint, you might get a little bit of a chalky haze, but um, but it's not bad. Uh, definitely not for the price, you know. I, I'm not going to have super high expectations for something I paid $16 for, uh, for 48 colors. It's 33 cents a pan. Um, this little, um, little whatchamacallit, <laughs> a little seascape. That was fun. Um, yeah, I found them very easy to use. The only thing where I think you might end up with, um, I don't even know. I mean, they glazed fine. I glazed on here. I'm trying to think what you might have an issue with if you were learning on these paints, like if you're getting them for like maybe your kid or your teen. Um, I don't know. I didn't really have any issue glazing. Um, you know what? They might stain. Let's do a little lift test here while I got you here. Let's get a nice, we'll use this brush because it's pretty firm. It's a, it's a tack on. So what I'll do is I'll just try lifting a few colors. Well, let's do ultra, this kind of ultramarine looking color here because actually it's more of a phthalo blue color. Oh, that looks pretty good. Let's try this one here. It's a little bit more like an ultramarine. This is like the brightest like ultramarine tone I've ever seen. Oh yeah, those lift good. Let's try a couple reds. Those are usually pretty stubborn. Let's try the crimson. So, I mean, I like it if a paint glazes. Uh, it's nice if you can lift it too, especially for beginners, because if they make a mistake, sometimes they'll want to scrub it in the area and lift it out, which is better a better option than going in with, with uh, white. I mean, you've got a little staining on that Merlot, but, um, but not bad. Um, I really have no complaints here. If you want, I mean... I mean, it's really hard to uh, to judge these harshly because you would pay more just for the tin and the half pans. So um, yeah, I recommend it. I think it's a good buy. Um, and I'll, if you let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to post this tutorial. I did record it, but then I'm like, oh, it's kind of really simple. But then again, sometimes people, sometimes you just want to relax. You know, you just want to sit down. You just want to have a cup of tea, maybe a glass of wine. You want to paint a little bit. No big deal, right? Uh, so let me know if you want me to post that tutorial, and I will. Um, and then, you know, I, I like it for the little watercolor cards. I think it's just really fun. And it's like not very, um, you know, it's not precious because you didn't spend $400. Because I mean, if you're getting an, arts, an artist quality set of 48 pans, you're going to spend between two and $400 on it. This is $16, not even. So I'll put a link to that in the video description so you can check it out if you want to. Um, it is an affiliate link. If you buy it, I will earn a little money on that. Uh, but don't feel pressured and uh, you get my honest opinion no matter what. Um, I did purchase that myself and uh, because I just I couldn't resist. I'm like 16 bucks. I mean, come on. <laughs> it's worth it for the tin. Well, that's all I have to say. If you have any questions, you can let me know in the comments below. I'll show you the swatch here again. Um, I mean, really, I don't think you can go wrong for that price. Uh, Christmas is coming around. You want to get a stocking stuffer for, I would say, I, I think any like Anyone ages probably like 8 to 16 would be pretty thrilled to have something like this if they don't have watercolors. Um, but also crafters or somebody that wants to use watercolors as a sketchbook medium, not as their, their primary paint set doing works to hang on a wall, I, I'd say go for it. I mean, if you don't... If you don't have any paints already, why not? Well, thank you so much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And until next time, happy crafting.